again, Dr. Arthi Rao, consultant here at IVF London, and I'm going to be talking to you today about the process of the egg collection or the egg harvesting or the oocyte retrieval. You've been through the entire treatment cycle now, starting from the second day of your period when you've been taking injections for the last 10 to 12 days. And this has eventually culminated in the follicles growing and being ready to be harvested. So the process of the egg collection generally is done about 36 hours after your last injection, which would be your trigger injection or the final injection that brings about the uh, last maturation of the oocyte, getting it ready to be collected and then fertilized. So when we talk about 36 hours, it means um, if you have your egg collection timed at, say for instance, eight o'clock on a Wednesday, you would have your injection taken around 8 p.m. on Monday. The process begins when you walk into the clinic, the nurse, nurse checks you in and you get changed into the gown that you wear in the operating theater. They put an IV line on you and one of the consultants, either me or somebody else, will come in and talk to you once again about the procedure and take your final consent. The anesthetist will also come around and talk to you about the process of sedation that's going to be given to you. He talks to you about the drugs that are going to be given and how long it takes to recover. Once that's done, we take you into the operating theater. We want you to be relaxed. It's a positive step that we have reached in our treatment. And we go into the theater. There's music of your choice playing whatever it may be, Taylor Swift or ABBA or just some jazz or religious music, whatever you want. I'd like you to relax completely. The anesthetist does his job of putting you to sleep and you need to think of your best holiday that you've been to, whether it's wherever, even your grandma's house. And um, once you're feeling a little drowsy, we put your feet up in the stirrups and begin draping you, covering your legs, covering the lower part of your body in sterile drapes or sterile coverings. Once that's done, I do an ultrasound for you, transvaginally, very similar to what has already been done. You would have had the same uh, scans done earlier on during when the follicles were being tracked. I do the ultrasound, we look at the ovaries one final time before we finally insert the needle that we are going to use for the aspiration of the follicles into the ovary. So, so the collection is done transvaginally. There's no cut anywhere on your body. It's a very fine needle that is attached to the transvaginal probe that goes through the vagina into the ovary. That's connected to a test tube and we suck the eggs out and the test tube is given to the embryologist who puts it under the microscope to look for the egg. Once all the follicles are aspirated, we do a final check with the ultrasound and take the probe and the needle out. We bring you out of the theater and into the recovery ward where you will find yourself waking up and soon we give you a warm drink and a couple of cookies and you're ready to go home. Now, because you've had anesthesia or a deep sedation on that day, I would recommend you don't have a really heavy meal when you go back the same day. Something light and something and cooked food, if possible, instead of having a salad or, or sushi or something like that. I would, we would also be able to give you pain relief extra pain relief if you need something for the night. Now, before you leave, either me or the embryologist will be talking to you about how many eggs we collected on that day. We wouldn't be able to tell you about the quality of the eggs, which would come in, which the lab would call you the next day, but we would be able to give you the numbers and that should correspond to the number of follicles we had seen on the day that we gave you the trigger. Sometimes we get a few more because we like to extract every egg that we can see. 
Sometimes we get a few less because some of the follicles that we see may be empty and not contain an egg. Subsequent to their collection, when the lab is doing its job, they're fertilizing the eggs and they're putting the, fertili the, the fertilized eggs in the, into the incubator, they would be calling you every day to give you an update. They'd also give you a link to uh, a, a video link to what's happening inside the incubator and you'd, you'd be able to see for yourself. So you see the one egg becoming two, becoming four, becoming eight, and it's absolutely amazing. And if we're going to do a fresh transfer, we plan your transfer on the fifth day of growth of the embryo, that is when it's a blastocyst. If we're not planning a transfer, we freeze the embryos on the fifth day, and then we plan a transfer later on. If we are trans planning a transfer earlier on, now, for instance, if we have very, uh, just one egg or if we have one embryo or for whatever reason we decide to do a transfer earlier on, we would obviously let you know and we take it on from there. If we are doing a transfer any time in that cycle, for, as to say a fresh transfer, we'd be starting you on, on your progesterone medication from the day of the egg collection. Again, it's important to make sure you drink enough water, remain hydrated and up the proteins in your diet because a lot of water and proteins comes out of your body along with the follicular fluid. If you have a large number of eggs collected and we've already spoken to you about the risk of hyperstimulation, we would like you to take a little extra care and we may would call you back a couple of extra times into the clinic to make sure that everything goes off well. Again, wishing you all the very best.